Hello everyone, this is Dr. Samir once again and I am going to speak next on the series of the dialysis machines. So today I am going to discuss about dialysis solution. So as we know the dialysis solution is used as a counter current fluid to the blood flow from the patient for exchange of ions or your waste materials from blood to this fluid and some ions from this fluid dialysis fluid to the blood okay so this dialysis fluid generally is mixed is a concentrated powder which is mixed with ro water from the ro plant as we know to get a solution that is generally isotonic with our body or slightly lesser hypotonic okay so this is what it is um, the concentrate dialysis concentrate or the powder is mixed with ro water or clean water and is the dialysis solution is prepared which flows as a counter current to the blood from the patient and the exchange takes place between blood and the dialysate. So the constituent of this is generally sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, chloride, bicarbonate and dextrose. So sodium potassium concentration is and chloride concentration is generally in uh, similar range to that of our plasma. Whereas calcium, magnesium levels, they differ. I will tell you why and how. So the sodium and chloride, they are basically similar to that of our blood levels. Your potassium and calcium levels, they can be higher or lower depending on the uh, need of the or the levels of the patient. Suppose the patient is severely hypokalemic, then we need a high potassium dialysis to uh, send potassium from the dialysis into the blood. Similarly for calcium, if the patient is hypocalcemic, we need calcium to go from the dialysate into the blood. So potassium and calcium concentration will be higher in the dialysate flow uh, so that in cases of patients with severe hypokalemia and hypocalcemia so that these ions can go from the dialysate flow as per the concentration gradient by diffusion technique as I had told you in the previous video. So by diffusion technique these salts will go into the your bloodstream okay so and if the patient is having severe hyperkalemia or hypercalcemia we also have potassium free dialysate that has zero concentration of potassium so that more amount of potassium is removed from the blood okay so this this can vary depending upon our requirement now magnesium phosphate are generally very uh, higher levels in the, in the ckd patients or in patients who need dialysis because of acute kidney injury your patient generally have higher magnesium and higher phosphate levels so generally the dialysate fluid has lower magnesium and phosphate levels for clearance from the blood into the dialysate fluid okay now our main uh, component again bicarbonate the generally we do dialysis most of the time because of severe metabolic acidosis your bicarbonate amount in the blood is very very low the normal levels as i know it is 22 to 26 as we all know or it is 24 so it is generally severe metabolic acidosis have severe base excess of minus 10, 12 or even higher. So there is a very depleted bicarbonate uh, component in our body. So the dialysate fluid bicarbonate is very high so that the bicarbonate ion can move from the dialysate into the blood. So increasing the bicarbonate uh, quantity of the blood or causing alkalosis and improving the acidosis. The problem with bicarbonate is that bicarbonate solutions are more prone for infections okay so this can be prevented by using dry bicarbonate powder instead of the solution uh, so that depends varies from place to place and upon the expertise so how which to use upon the cost and all so but we should know that bicarbonate solution is very prone for infection because of its alkalotic ph so the salt that I was telling this is the bicarb salt so this is generally it has to the dialysate flow has two parts as I had shown in the first during the machine uh, acid and the bicarb two drums were there in the uh, in front of the machine so this is the part B or the bicarb solution it is generally mixed in 50 liters as you can see this is a dry bicarbonate concentrate as you can see it is non-sterile not for parenteral use so dialysate concentration we can see dilution ratio is 1 is to 1.83 is to 34. So I will tell you again what is that part A is your acid, acid should be one part, part B is bicarbonate which should be 1.83 and RO water is 34. So the dialysate concentration should be 57 sodium, 34 bicarb and chloride 23. 
so this is what the composition this is the uh, this is the bicar powder concentrate okay so uh, as i told you the dilated fluid one bucket is from bicarbonate and one bucket is of acid uh, those both are aspirated by two tubes and they are mixed with the ro water and the dilated fluid is eventually made which is goes to the dilyzer in the counter current uh, direction okay so as i told you this one once again to revise your this is your bicar this is your acid so this contains 50 liter of water and that full packet and this contains uh, your one packet of bicarb and again 50 liters of water this has to be diluted in 50 liters of water each packet so as you can see con composition one part of acid 1.83 part of bicarb and 34 part of ro water they get mixed in here see this is bicarb getting aspirated and this is acid getting aspirated they are mixed here along with ro water from the back and then that dilysate is uh, brought over here into the dilyzer okay so this is the part a solution or the your acid dry citrate citrusate okay part a again this has to be mixed in 50 liters of water okay so again the dilysate concentration as i told you uh, 1 is to 1.83 is to 34 okay so eventual chemical composition here with dilysate is sodium chloride calcium chloride magnesium chloride potassium chloride citric acid sodium acetate and dextrose which i told in the beginning the problem with uh, having a singular dilysate flow in one container mixing both the powders together is that the h plus ion and the hco3 minus so actually this helps in the way that there, see there are chloride salts there are calcium there is magnesium these salts can form salts and that can get deposited in the your tumblers or the those uh, buckets so the h plus and hco3 minus they form combined to form the carbonic acid which reduces the ph of the solution and that prevents formation of your salts your calcium salts or magnesium salts that can get deposited and can cause precipitates okay so once again these packets okay so the pro there are also some solutions available where we can con uh, control the sodium profiling of the patient uh, so it can be used in your hyponatremia hypernatremia so if there is high sodium concentrations we can vary the sodium concentration intra dilatic during the dialysis the concentration of the sodium can be varied and that will help in clearing out the sodium in case of hypernatremia or increase during a hyponatremia the problem that we can face is generally that if more of the sodium has been removed it can cause your hypotension okay and if more of the sodium and it can cause your if the sodium suddenly increases because of this profiling we go for a achieve higher concentration of sodium there are chances of feeling thirsty dryness of mouth and there can also be side effects of your uh, hypertension in patients with high sodium concentration okay so this is basically your uh, summary about the dilysate fluid thank you